rights to your own image. It is time for vacation and sightseeing and therefore making a lot of pictures. But is it a problem if there is a person visible on that picture? Law and filming and photography are different in different countries and today I try to show the most important ones from Germany. As we know, Germans traditionally value the privacy, so what about photos of Germans or people in Germany? We have to distinguish between different things here. On the one hand, there are people or things, and on the other, private use or publication. You come to Germany as a tourist and want to see the Brandenburg Gate, the Old Town of Constance or the Alpfalomanie Concert Hall and take photos. If you are taking pictures from a public space, such as a street in Constance, the square in front of the Brandenburg Gate or the jetty in the port of Hamburg, and the main subject is the building, this is not critical at first. Even private houses, such as most of the houses in the old town of Constance, may be photographed or filmed from the street. It is important that you do not use any aids. You may not climb a ladder to film over a high hedge or use a smartphone stick to take photos in a first floor window. Freedom of panorama means that you are permitted to stand in a public place and take a picture from your normal position. If you are filming, any recorded conversation are a different problem. Special care may need to be taken with a sound for the film. Eavesdropping is generally not permitted. I must also not be able to identify the house, so I have to pixelate the doorbell sign, the street name and the house number or the license plate number of the car in a driveway. But the house itself, it is not a problem. However, if you are on private property, domiciliary rights applies. For example, there is an absolute ban of photography or filming in kindergartens, outdoor swimming pools or schools in Germany. We'll get to the why in a moment. In museums, photography or the use of flash is often prohibited, whether it is to protect the object or to sell the photo books available there is irrelevant. The domiciliary rights applies. Even if the estate agent wants to take pictures of the apartment, the tenant must give their permission. What about a drone? Flying drones over residential areas is prohibited and if we fly the drone over people we come to the next point. What if there are people in the photo? The question is whether people are an accessory or a central aspect. If I want to photograph the Brandenburg Gate it will be difficult to do so without any people in the picture, just like the Elf film in a concert hall. If I take a photo of the whole gate and a few people are walking towards or away from me, but the focus is on the gate, that's not a problem. If I take a photo of a demonstration and people can be seen there, that is also fine because the aim of the demonstration is to attract public attention. At a private event, on the other hand, it's a completely different story. In Germany, you have the right to your own image. So if someone takes a picture of me away from a demonstration, then I have to agree to it in principle. When a photographer takes a photo of a model, both parties typically enter into a contract in which the model assigns their rights to the photographer. If three friends look into the camera together for a selfie, it can be assumed that all three agree to the photo being taken. However, this does not mean that they agree to the photo being published. We'll get to that too. So if I want to take a photo of someone who is not just an accessory or part of a demonstration, I need the person's permission. And if this person is a minor, I also need the permission of their legal guardian. This is partially based on the basic law, the Art Copyright Act and the Criminal Code. Paragraph 201a of the German Criminal Code describes this precisely. If someone takes photos of me in a protected area, such as my home, this is prohibited. So if I take photos of the aforementioned house from a public space, I'm not allowed to take 
photos of people who are in their house or on the property such as children playing. If I take pictures of helpless people such as accident victims, sick people or drunk people, this is also prohibited. If I take pictures in a grossly offensive manner or expose the person, for example with their pants down in the toilet or in the changing room, this is also prohibited. All of this can be punished with up to two years in prison. It is also forbidden to make such images available to third parties. If you look at the USA, for example, where images of alleged criminals are shown openly during police checks, such images are always pixelated in Germany. When it comes to reporting on the trial of a well-known person, such as a film star, politician or famous sports person, this can be dispensed with because it is then a historical document. However, this is not the case for a simple private individual. The first two articles of the basic law state that human dignity is inviolable, which also means that these denigrating images are prohibited. There is also the Art Copyright Act. This makes it clear that the person photographed has a right to their own image. If everyone lines up for a group photo at a wedding, then these people are in agreement with the photo itself. However, sharing or publishing a photo is something completely different. Having the wedding photo or the children sleeping with a cuddly toy in the family album is one thing. Posting the photo publicly on Facebook, YouTube or Snapchat and the like, even if only your friends see it or sending it via messenger, WhatsApp or similar is something completely different. Again, I need the consent of everyone involved. So, I would have to ask our three friends who are looking into the camera whether I can publish the photo on a website. This always applies to people if they are recognizable. A person can also be recognizable if I can recognize a certain tattoo or a particular hairstyle. If a bald person is sitting behind the wheel of a certain car, you may be also to clearly recognize them despite their pixelated face. This also explains why all photos are regularly banned in kindergarten in Germany. Even from behind you can clearly recognize a blonde girl with a green raincoat and pink rubber boots and the girl as well as the parents would have to agree to a photo and publication. Publishing video recording from the kindergarten for the parents in the live stream would again require the consent of all parents in the kindergarten and at the same time they would certainly ask what the children rights are. In principle, children aged 8 and over must also consent to the publication of their images. So if a kindergarten or school wants to take photos, like for a summer party and possibly give them to the press, they need the consent of all the children and their parents depicted. The employer also needs the clear and voluntary permission of the employee. A photo on the employee ID card is fine and serves safety purposes. In principle, this is not objectionable. However, if the employer wants to publish photos of employees as part of a company celebration or project completion, this requires a clear permission of the employees, which they can revoke at any time. So when True Brit approaches people on the street and interviews them, I assume that he explains beforehand that these recordings will be published on YouTube and the people then agree to this. The consent can perhaps be filmed itself in order to have the consent as a proof. Photographers usually have a written contract with the models regarding the assignment and publication of rights for the photos. When I take photos or make films, I try to include as few recognizable people as possible and if a person can be seen to pixelate those recognizable people who are accidentally there. If someone jumps behind the reporter during a reportage and wants to be in the picture, this person should, of course, not be surprised that this is published. If, on the other hand, a person turns away from the camera when attempting an interview, this is a clear sign that this person does not want to be photographed or filmed and therefore certainly does not want to be published. This should be cut out or at least made unrecognizable so that the person cannot be identified. 
If you have been published without permission, you can report this to the police. As noted above, this is a criminal offense that must then be prosecuted by the public prosecutor's office. A private law action for damage is not affected by this. However, you should seek advice from a specialist lawyer. So, if you take nice pictures on vacation, there is nothing wrong with that. If you want to publish these pictures, you should check carefully whether this is permitted and whether every recognizable person agrees. It is also possible that you have photographed something that is a protected work of art and you are therefore infringing the rights of the artist. In this case, the artist may be able to take legal action against the publication and, if necessary, claim damages. And of course, which I'm sure no one here does, any sexual depiction of minors is punishable by law. Even if minors share the images or films with each other, this is punishable and even the attempt to create or distribute them is punishable. Of course, private possession without publication is also punishable. What do you prefer to photograph on vacation? Nature? Landscape? Building? People? I hope you have the right light for your shots. Thank you for your attention. I see you in the next video.